APIs and data, are these two different things or should they, can they be treated the same way? That's an interesting question that we'll discuss today with Stefan Tilkov, um, founder and principal consultant at InnoQ. Hey, Stefan, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you. We haven't met in a while, but um, it's, it's good to see you again. So let's talk a little bit about the difference. And, and we discussed this leading up to this interview, that there's a curious difference in how people sometimes are treating data and services as different categories of things. So can you talk to us a little bit about what you are seeing and, and what you think about those different views that people might have? Sure. So I don't know, maybe we could start with an analogy. Let's just assume that you're building this hugely complicated landscape of applications with different parts, domains, different uh, different pieces of business logic, different processes that are supported. And you have this fantastic idea that you put everything into one giant executable, one .exe file. It's just, right? We, I mean, it's just one... It's kind of nice. We open it in the IDE. It's like, this is my company dot project. It just have, has everything in it. I mean, that sounds awesome, right? Because it was, it, you know, everything would be in one place. You only have to deal with one thing. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic here because that is very much not a good idea. And I think most people would agree with that, right? You, I mean, we've learned in, what is it now, 60 years of professional software engineering that there are certain ways you want to treat decoupling or coupling in general. You want to do modularize, modularization in a, in, a, in a certain way that allows you to evolve in parallel and have clear interfaces and all of those things. I mean, it's like, you know, basic software engineering 101 that you should do that. And that's very obviously what everybody, well, not maybe, maybe not everybody, but what most people have accepted in the world of software engineering. But it's still quite different in, in the world of data. In the world of data, we very often have these very centralized things where tons of data are just put into one single place because they'll, they might all come in handy one day. I mean, they might be useful, right? So let's just put them all in this huge lake. Let's just, you know, like, like somebody polluting the waters with their, with their waste. We're just, you know, we're just channeling everything into that particular lake so that we can we can then go fishing in there. And somehow that does not strike me as a, as a super sensible idea. So I think it's quite often treated differently. And, and the, the, the way that this might be changing is something I think we, we might be talking about. We might talk about today. Yeah. And I think it's a good analogy, but I think, you know, in, in, in all fairness, it also, I think is, a, is important to point out that a long time ago, when the whole IT thing started, our, our domains used to be much smaller. We didn't do True. that many things with IT, right? So, and now that's different. So I think the complexity of what we're tackling with IT has grown so much that, that we've learned in a painful way, oftentimes, <laughs> what it takes to, to better manage that complexity. And I, I think that development is something that is kind of a natural evolution of things maybe that over time, right? If you want to manage things that become more and more complex, you probably have to adapt your management style or your, your methods to, to what you're doing there. And I'm wondering when mm -hmm. you look at it this way, how would you say looking at the growing complexity of our services or IT landscape, how does that evolution apply to the data sector? Is that the same complexity? I mean, we have more and more data, but if that is the case, then why haven't we learned the same lessons or why don't we apply the same patterns, at least not always to the data mm -hmm. side that we apply, I would say much more often now times to the IT or the services side. So. First of all, I'm not 100% sure where exactly in that progression we are at the moment, right? Because these these worlds are not static and they move. And of course, it's not as if uh, the people in, in one of these two worlds are super smart and the others are totally dumb. That's entirely not the case. There are super smart people in both worlds who do very interesting, very fa and fascinating and useful and reasonable things, as well as very, very stupid things. So that's we've got that spread evenly across those two worlds. What I think has changed a bit is that... Um, 
the um, the services world or the logic world, as opposed to the, which is a stupid term, but you know what I mean, or the people building transactional systems uh, with whatever technology, um, I think they have a bit of a head start in um, addressing the needs of wanting to move fast. Now, this is a bit of a theory, but I think the pressure that we got in this world from having to adapt very, very quickly to new things and from, you know, prioritizing speed or time to market over efficiency and everything else, that is something that has hit this world very strongly in the last decade or so. So a ton of things have happened there that address this particular concern. Another thing that has happened there first, I think, is the availability of hugely useful things as services themselves. So platform services, cloud-based things that you can just use are now extremely common in, in our project. It's like, I don't know, maybe 90% of the client projects we do are now running in a public cloud or some at least some hybrid mixture of whatever, typically the public cloud. Um, and um, that, of course, has, start, has started to happen, is already happening, is already the reality in the data world as well. But I think it, it took a tiny little bit longer. So that's only been recently uh, been a, a pretty recent development. So in the, in, in, the, in the last few years, there's been a ton of uh, cloud services that can be used in the data world as well. And that means that it's much easier and much more accessible. It's much less of a of of something that is only that can only be done by experts. Um, so it becomes more accessible to more people, and so we can do things that we couldn't do in the past. So one example is that we have this. We have this DevOps, we had this DevOps development, development. I don't know when, 10 years ago, something like that. So we started to, so yeah, whatever, something like that. So we started to include things that used to be the exclusive domain of data center operators into our development teams. And I think we can see something similar in the data world as well. Things that used to be, you know, very centralized responsibilities are now becoming part of decentralized teams. And the, the, I think the, the pressure that leads to this is the same. It's we want, to, we want to put responsibility to the place where the knowledge is, right? We don't want to have this separation of, you know, there are the technical experts in this particular technology over here. So they, they're the only ones who can do this, who can administer, I don't know, that ESB or, or you know, that data lake product, whatever. Um, so we have to, we, we can only use those three people. So we just have to ship all the data to them so that they can do something useful with it. These days we ship the technology to the people who, who own the data and make it easier or at least, yeah, at least easier for them to use that to do meaningful and reasonable things. That's at least something that I believe that I observe in, in, in many of our projects now. That's yeah, that's a really interesting observation, I would say. And and like you said, right, we, we see that definitely that more and more the further along, I would say, along a certain evolution path an organization gets, the more and more we see this trend towards decentralization. Because mm -hmm. it, it's it's a funny in my mind, it's a funny development. Sometimes it starts decentralized with initial teams doing interesting things here and there. Then somebody realizes, oh, we have these five teams. Shouldn't we all pull them together? And then at some mm -hmm. time when everybody does it and now it's all centralized, then you realize, oh, this slows us down a lot because there's a lot of coordination. So now maybe we should push it out again. And I think that that is an interesting kind of back and forth movement in itself. That's true. And maybe for the data space, it's something where we've only seen this movement and now we're not quite there yet where we see the movement in the other direction or not quite as pronounced well i do see some cross pollination right so there are there are it's not you know it's a, it's a bit like the again maybe the analogy is a, it's not too bad uh, like the devops thing right i think in the, when we had this devops thing those two communities started to to mix and, and there were people who had respect for both sides of these things, right? They, they were not, you know, these stupid idiots over there. They just don't know what they're doing, whoever, whoever they were, right? So they, um, it sort of, it became, uh, it became sort of a common knowledge that having things like, uh, you know, um, configuration management and versioning and, and, you know, automation is a good thing, of course. 
and uh, treating uh, treating infrastructure not as an afterthought but as an as, a, as, a, as an essential part of your success was also not a, you know something that that people had to be convinced or maybe initially they had to be convinced of that but nowadays I think this is pretty much a given so some people have like they have a stronger focus on one or the other but nobody would say uh, this is this is you know this is stupid or useless or, or not important or anything like this like a, we've we've figured out that we sh that we need to collaborate to move things forward and i think the same is happening with those worlds as well the uh, the 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 dev people or the yeah let's call them the dev people the dev or devops people have uh, have uh, a lot of respect for the knowledge of the data folks they know there's a ton of very interesting things that you can only do if you understand how to uh, how to manage data how to transform it how to um, how to clean it how to put it to good use for, I don't know, AI, ML, use cases, whatever. There's a ton of things and a ton of best practices there. Um, but there's also a ton of best practices in the development world, world regarding um, how, do you, how do you find that balance between centralization and decentralization? Which decisions do you put into autonomous teams and which de decisions need to be made centrally and maintain and govern centrally? And how do you set up federated governance of some kind? How do you... How do you uh, balance these forces? That's that's uh, that's maybe even from from a fourth fourth world the the, the you know the the social or agile or uh, you know uh, team oriented world that figures out how the how team dynamics influence everything. So that all all you know now come or is being joined together with this data world to create something new, which is not better or. or Better than one or the other. It's just it's just something like the DevOps and something new that emerges from those ideas cross pollinating. That's my assumption, at least. I, I like the, those two terms that you kind of used in conjunction, or a little bit maybe not in opposition, but like being a little bit separate, like the mm -hmm. data people and the the dev people. Mm -hmm. And that, in my mind, that's almost the most worrying thing sometimes, or it's something that confuses me a little bit when you read papers or you hear announcements that are so exclusively about the data and not really wondering mm -hmm. where the data comes from, how it's managed, how it's getting updated, how to, like you say, maybe improve it, clean it, um, like these kind of things. So, so without going into the details of how exactly you manage your data, this separation, I would say, is almost the most confusing thing for me sometimes, that in mm -hmm. organizations you still have people who exclusively think and talk about data without thinking and talking about where the data comes from and how it's getting managed and how to improve the way how it's managed and these kind of things. And I'm wondering, is that something that you also see and, and do you see that changing or is that also a separation that you still encounter in your work? Well, I think we've lived with that separation for ages, right? I mean, you can you can see it even in academics, right? There's a clear separation between uh, I don't know the people who do the databases and the people who do distributed systems, which is kind of stupid because every database is a distributed systems. Why why is that? Why is that two different disciplines? Makes no sense at all. So traditionally, I think we had a lot of that, um, and in the in, in companies as well on many levels, right? There used to be, or there still is in in many companies. Um, uh, a data warehouse or, or information intelligence or data intelligence, whatever, whatever it's business intelligence team that reports directly, I don't know, to the to the CFO, whereas the development organization reports to some CTO somewhere else. And it's like, I mean, but I think people have definitely figured out that that is not a good thing. I think that's a that's always depends on who you talk to. But almost everybody I talk to these days is very well aware that those things need to collaborate. So one example is we've done a lot of projects in the last few years with uh, larger companies who uh, totally bought into that um, decentralized autonomous teams developing in their in their own domain or parts of the domain to create a larger thing, a larger system or system landscape with a lot of autonomy and some centralized rules and a lot of integration and uh, uh, cloud self-service, whatever, right? There's like a, a ton of things. I can, I, can, I can throw a thousand links at you if you want to put them into the show notes about how to do this. Um, and there's, there are tons of talks and conferences, whatever. This is sort of the, the modern, uh, to me at least, the modern large-scale software development world. It's all, it has, has, has definitely bought into that. And every single one of those projects runs into the data problem 
or the data issue because there is a, a separate part of the organization that deals with data. So how do they collaborate? Do you is that is that a separate thing? How is there some sort of integration? Is there I don't know some one of those teams responsible for handing over all the data to the data warehouse team and how are their release cycles? Are they synchronized in some way? Is that is that run on the same cloud or different clouds? Is that what about, what about the insights gained from the data? How are they fed back into those individual teams, into those individual team subsystems? These are all questions that everybody runs into. So everybody has to figure them out. And we can now see some sort of, I wouldn't call it standardization, but you can see some, some thoughts uh, uh, appearing. So I think we we might be talking about this in another setting, but the the, the whole data mesh thing, I think, is is a, is a is the answer or an attempt at an answer to this thing, which is gaining a lot of traction right now. But of course, it might not be the only one. There might be other might be other ways you might want to address that. But everybody, I think, feels that this is a problem and, and that it needs to be addressed. That's good to hear that you have the answer. <laughs> the answer, yes, exactly. It's very easy. So, to be right. continued. So then. Yeah, then we don't need to talk about that anymore. We yeah. have the answer. No, yeah. but but I, I totally <laughs> buy into this. But just because you were describing it in such a nice way, I'm wondering if we look at how the IT world kind of really adopted to, to a large extent, I would say this this decentralized and DevOps oriented model. Have you mm -hmm. seen something like data ops coming along? Are people using that term even? I just made it up, but I'm just yeah, wondering because that kind of would be the yeah, I haven't seen the term. No, it's kind of weird. Maybe you should, we should reserve. You should reserve the domain name right now. Yeah. Well, so um, I haven't seen the term, but I definitely have seen uh, the consequence. Right. So um, this is definitely something that the most, to me at least, the most advanced projects have started doing. They've integrated this data thing into those individual teams because, and I, I, re, I strongly believe this is really uh, this has become a firm conviction of mine this is the the by far best way to make actual use of that stuff so i don't know when i was when i was when i was uh, a very young software developer and that was a very long time ago i had this idea that um it can't it can't hurt to collect more data right and have more data fields and you know less this might come, this might be useful one day, right? So let's just add those attributes. Let's just add that data fields, that table columns, whatever, right? And we could do, we can just collect that. Data. And after a while you learn, that's not how things work, right? It's not, you know, it's not in general a good idea to, you know, muddy the waters with all of that stuff that you have no idea where it came from, what it actually means, how true or how related to reality it is. If you have all of those things, what do you do? You don't do with any use anything useful with them. And I think if you know what it is you're looking at, you can really make sense of it and you can really derive very interesting insights. But that domain knowledge, that knowledge about this particular data is extremely important. And that's, I think, why you need to put that there. Put it, give it to the people who can actually use it as opposed to giving it to the people who know how to use it but have no data to use it on. It's like... I really like the really question like of why maybe you shouldn't randomly collect things without knowing why you're collecting them. And ideally, we don't have the time today. Ideally, I would like yeah. to go all Wittgenstein on you on that, right? In the sense that if <laughs> you don't use something, yeah, right? If you don't use yeah. something, you don't know what it means because it could be anything. If you're not using it, you, you kind of have no reference what it really is used for and then it doesn't really have mm -hmm. a meaning so to speak in the practical mm -hmm. sense but anyway i i really like the way that you're describing that development or that trajectory so what i take away from this and and we're wrapping this up for today so that we have another one <laughs> to talk about so what i'm taking away from you is that data ops is a thing um <laughs> the, the one way to deal with this is data mesh that's the solution <laughs> Great. Okay. And, um, I'm starting to regret this. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking here. But I, I think there needs to be a way to address that. And and data mesh, which mm -hmm. we will talk about in a future video, is one way of doing that. And in the end, I think it's mostly about what the pattern looks like. And you could probably do it in other ways as well. But as well, but certain properties of what that is, then probably are what makes it a good solution to the problem, mm -hmm. I would assume. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. 
Okay, good. So in that case, we have, I think we've talked quite a bit about this weird kind of separation that still exists, but that you also see is now being more and more bridged in projects, which is a good thing to hear. And um, with that, I think we have uh, reached our our goal for today, which is to talk about that separation a little bit. Thanks a lot so much for taking your t the time, Stefan. Thanks for having me, Eric. And um, next time we'll talk about data mesh and, and talk a little bit about what that is, what it does and, and what, what problem it promises to solve. And um, that's it for today. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. And until next time, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.